Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, your location. And uh, thanks a lot for joining us today for this event. Um, the Chicago Booth Alumni Club of France and the France Biotech are delighted to welcome Dr. Eric Louvel, uh, MD and Founder and Representative Director of uh, Mitsu Baicho Consulting for a talk on geographic expansion to Japan for biotech and medtech with a special focus on market attractiveness go alone or partnership, when to go, how to go. So Eric is a physician, psychiatrist, and he holds Master of Science in Clinical Pharmacology, Statistics in Biology and Epidemiology, as well as a university diploma in Neuropsychopharmacology. Uh, <clears throat> uh, during his last position in the pharma industry, uh, Eric was VP R&D on Open Innovation at Bayer Pharma in Japan, from 99 to uh, 2017, where he obtained 52 drug approvals and established the, big, uh, the first big data team in, in Japan. So in uh, 2018, Eric funded <coughs> and is the representative director of uh, Mitsu Baicho Consulting. So it is a management consulting company uh, dedicated to EU US biotech medtech uh, willing to develop and grow uh, in Japan. So during his talk, uh, Eric will share with us his extensive experience and knowledge of the Japanese pharmaceutical, biotech and medtech environment. And based on real life example, he will start his talk on Japanese biotech medtech market attractiveness, and then will guide us uh, through the decision-making process uh, necessary to optimally start and successfully develop a biotech medtech business in the third biggest pharma market in the world. That's something we uh, tend to forget, but Japan is the third. So feel free to ask a question anytime through the sandbox. And uh, those questions will be answered during the Q&A session at the end of the talk. So Eric, thanks a lot for being with us today, uh, for accepting uh, this invitation and uh, the floor is yours. Pierre, thank you very much for the introductions. Um, Good morning. Uh, pleased uh, to be with you from France, uh, US, and, and I heard from, from Japan. So as uh, Pierre was telling us, my topic today is geographic expansion to Japan. This is obviously a very broad topic, uh, and uh, I'm not going to be able to cover everything, uh, but I will pick up what is in my opinion, uh, the most interesting. My understanding is we will have a 15 to 20 minutes Q&A at the end. So please uh, keep your questions and uh, I will answer uh, after the presentation. So um, we can uh, skip this uh, forward-looking statement. Um, so this is a topic of today. Um, I... Uh, um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of topics and probably each topic would require probably a minimum of one hour. Anyway, uh, we'll try to summarize. Um, but before to address uh, the topic listed there, I'm going to tell you a little bit what we are doing in, uh, in our uh, consulting company uh, and then we'll move uh, to the topic. So this is my bio and uh, uh, Pierre talked already about that. You have my email address, so if you have questions uh, that you cannot ask, you can email me directly. So Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Consulting, uh, this is a management consulting and sourcing firms devoted to biotech medtech in Japan. Um, uh, and we are helping uh, companies who are willing to, uh, to move uh, in, in this country. We established a company in, in 2018. Uh, we have private shareholders. We have a very light structure, but a large network of uh, uh, mainly pharma bioscience experts, but also similar translators, lawyers. And we have a network of business partners uh, when we need to get expertise that we don't have. The head office is in Tokyo. And this is what we are doing. 
70% of our business is in product development and time to market uh, uh, optimization. 20% in uh, partnering in, or 15% in partnering and due diligence and 15% in uh, uh, mostly executive search and manager, management interim sourcing. And you have on the right, the, um, the list of uh, associate and partner working with us, including a tax and law office partner. We have, we have some CRO, our partner. Um, we work with a company who deal with pricing and market access. Uh, we partner with an executive firm, search firm, and we work with a real estate agency when our clients are looking for office. Okay, let's move to the, the real topic of the day. Uh, so the, uh, the first question that you should ask is why to make a geographic expansion to Japan? And the answer is pretty obvious. You know, Japan is the third pharma RX market in the world. RX means prescription for those who don't know that. Uh, so this is a market which is bigger than, than China. For a long time, I'm not sure, but still bigger. Pharma being more, uh, China being more a generic market than innovation market. Uh, but more important in this question is why an early geographic uh, expansion to Japan? And what, and this is what mostly what I'm going to cover in, in, in this uh, webinar. In general, Europe and US biotech and medtech move too late in Japan. And it has consequences. Uh, the consequences are when you move too late to Japan, it makes the potential development deal with a lo local partner more challenging. You know, and most of the time too late. And I, I, will, ex I will come back on that later on. In general, it, de it destroys share shareholder value by delaying the market entry. If you partner too late, it's very difficult to file in Japan at the same time in the US and in Europe. And by filing late, obviously you, uh, you destroy value. And the third, you know, uh, uh, the last, but, but not the least, obviously, it delayed the access of Japanese patients to promising drugs, and this is an ethical issue. So the first takeaway that I would like you to bring back is an early and coordinated development entry to Japan, optimize the value of the asset and serve the patient. On the next slide, and for those who are not aware how to develop a new drug, I have copied these figures from the Japanese Pharmaceutical Manufacturer Association, and it represents the different step in drug development. In box one and two, you have the discovery phase. In box three, uh, the clinical phase, and, this, and there are three uh, steps in the, in the clinical phase, phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase one being the uh, phase in LC volunteer most of the time, except for oncology project. Phase two being the proof of concept and then the dose definitions in patient. And phase three being the large uh, phase three trials, which support the uh, application and the approval. The phase, the, the box three is the, the, uh, the application of, of the of the new drug dossier and the review by, by the agency. Uh, the box five is the approval and launch and the box six, six represents the, uh, the commercialization of the asset. And during the commercialization, you have obviously some, some post-marketing surveillance activity to perform and clinical study, either phase four in the approved indication or phase Three B in uh, for life cycle management. If you take medical device, you know this is 
slightly different, but not so much. And I, I don't have time to cover that, but you, know, you can ask questions. Uh, let's move now to, to the attractiveness of market. So as, as I already mentioned, uh, Japan is the uh, third Rx market in the world with roughly seven to eight percent of the world uh, Rx market. Uh, this is a third Rx market, the US with 49 percent, the EU 23 percent. Um, and you know what is interesting in Japan is this is a foreseeable market. It means that when you enter this market, you don't have surprise. You know? this, is, this is a market where you, that you can reach at the same time as the US and in Europe in terms of approval, at least for the best in class companies. Uh, and this is a market which is foreseeable also for approval. Um, you know, you can meet the agency you can talk with them, you have uh, uh, informations and, and, and uh, discussion meetings which are binding for the agency. So you know where, where you go when, 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 you, when you develop a drug uh, in Japan. Very important also, this is a market which is driven by innovation. You know, the, uh, um, the, the Japanese are picking up innovation very fast uh, and they are ready to pay for it. And important also is that all the stakeholders are aligned about the importance of, pro of providing access to the latest healthcare innovation. As I already mentioned, the price are fair, not as high in the US, at least for the time being, uh, but they are, they are in general, higher than in Europe, and I consider that they are pretty fair. Critically important also on this market is there is an universal healthcare coverage. That means that everyone has access to every drug as long as this is prescribed by, by a doctor. And there are limited co-payment. And important also, there is a single payer reimbursement system, which makes the system simple. Let's move now to go loan partnership. partnership. Um, obviously this is a strategic decision that every um, startup want to move to Japan uh, has to uh, make. Uh, there are reasons to go alone. If, if your uh, startup has more than one product, it's a good reason to go alone. If you do not need immediate financing, it's also a reason. If you deal in a specialty market, in niche or ultra niche, if your project are already de-risked or at low risk, then this is a reason to go alone. If you are playing in a field which is a disease priority for MSW, it's easier to go alone. Uh, if this is a disease where there are high unmet medical needs, this is also a good reason. And if you have a, a long-term plan uh, to build a global business, it makes sense uh, to have an affiliate in Japan. On the other side, on the right of, of the slide, there are reasons to partner. Single asset portfolio, need for cash, and uh, I know that a number of startups are at need for cash. If you if you deal with a primary care market or, or large specialty market, it's probably better to partner. If you are anticipating a fair competition for market entry ranking, this is a reason. If the if the market is super competitive, you may need a partner, uh, or if your drug or your device need to shape the market, you know, there is no precedent. Uh, there are soft factors, you know, you, you, you need to change some mindset. Then in that case, uh, Japanese companies are better at doing that. The last, you know, 
another reason is not the last there because uh, there are, there are um, more reason. If, if you need a sizable sales force, probably you need a partner. Between bracket, I ask the question, is it still relevant in the post COVID area? I'm not really sure. When I talk to, uh, to people involved in, in, in Salesforce or in, in the business, um, some people are believing that the industry is moving towards a world without medical representative. Uh, but probably more, more digital, inbound, outbound uh, call center and this kind of things, uh, digital targeting and so on. Anyway, if you are looking for the partner, have in mind that it takes two to tango. And I will, I will come back on that. It's not always easy to find a partner. When to go to Japan? So in general, the earlier is the better. And there, there is one strategic imperative for new chemical entity or new biological entity. You need to make sure that Japan takes part of the global dose definition study in order to later join the global pivotal phase three studies. This is an imperative. If you don't do that, it becomes more complicated. Based on this imperative, you need to rework the plan, knowing that there are some local prerequisites. So, for, and I, I list some of them. If you, if you don't have an affiliate in Japan, you need what we call an ICCT, which is um, in-country caretaker, someone who is developing your product on your behalf, you need to meet, you know, with, with the drug agency. You need to file a clinical trial notification like an IND in the US. So there are prerequisites. Uh, so you, you need to have that in your mind when, you're, when you design your global plan, including Japan. I put there the benchmark or what I consider the benchmark uh, for, from first in class company. This company designed their development plan very early, including the move in Japan, before global first in human. So before the global single dose phase one. They start the first dose in Japanese during the global phase one repeated dose in LC volunteer or at the latest during the global proof of concept study. They include Japanese patient and center into the global dose definition study phase 2B and then into global phase 3. And, you know, they also try to, to build early in the development a trustful relation with PNVA, which is critical. You know, if, if you build the trust, you know, everything will go smoothly. The next topic I would like to cover is how to go alone uh, to Japan. And uh, one preliminary com comment is you will never be alone when you move to Japan, obviously, you know. You will have advisor, you will have Mitsubaisho, you will have CRO, you will have whoever, but you will be surrounded by expert KOL and so on. So you will, not, will never be alone. What I mean by go, go alone means without partner. So if go alone is a decided strategic option, the first question is, do you want to have an affiliated company in Japan? If not, you, you, this is a different path. So if you decide to have an affiliated company in Japan, First, you need to set up an, if, an affiliate. And there are different structure, uh, GK, KK, which is uh, Godo Gaisha and Kabuchi Gaisha. Uh, so different type of, uh, of, uh, of um, limited company. 
uh, you need to get a corporate bank account. You need, you need to hire what we call the three mandatory officer, general manager, QA, pharmacovigilance head. You need to get a pharmaceutical license. Then you need to start the development of your asset, get a CRO on board, and then build a full-fledged affiliate. But you do not need to do that from the very early beginning. You can start by getting a CRO on board as an ICCT, and you can start the development of your asset. And then you can always, you know, in parallel, build your affiliate. Same thing, when you build an affiliate and you decide to have a, only a financial hub in Japan. And Sanofi a long time ago was like that, that was only a financial hub, you know. Uh, the, uh, but, you know, you can change your mind and you can get a company partner for phase three or commercial launch, launch if you not launch, launch. Uh, maybe for lunch also, but, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, if you realize that you don't have the muscle uh, to fight on the market, you know, you, you can change your mind and, and, and partner later in the development. The takeaway of this slide is you need to get a robust product development plan as early as possible including the clinical and regulatory strategy, the main milestone, and what needs to be done in Japan for smooth approval if you decide to go alone. Okay. The next option is a partnership in Japan. You can have a partnership with or without a local affiliate. And I already mentioned you may decide to have a financial hub. You may decide to have a, a co-development or only a co-marketing. So this is a, there are different options. If you decide for a global, for a partnership, you know, you need to decide, do you want a global partnership, including Japan, assuming that this global partner has an affiliate in Japan, or do you want to have a partnership with a local player? So uh, this is something that need to be looked at. And for some of our clients, we are looking at that and then we, we are obviously making recommendation. When to get a partner, this is uh, an important question. Uh, you, you can partner at early stage. And when you do that, you de-risk, this is a de-risking strategy. It means that your partner is going to pay part of your development in Japan. But at the end, you will get less income. If you do that, some companies consider that they can focus more on, on Europe and the US. I'm not sure this is really true, but you know, at least some company uh, uh, think about that. Uh, the pro, the cons of that is this is less attractive financially, obviously. It could be very challenging in terms of alignment and control. And you know, one key question that you should ask before signing is, what if it doesn't work? And sometimes it happens. You can also partner at relatively late stage. Uh, you will be in a better negotiation positions. You know, uh, you will have probably more potential partner because most of the partner, you know, are not willing to take so much risk at early stage. This is financially attractive with the upfront, the milestone and the royalties. And you are in the in that case you are in a driving seat in terms of uh, control and alignment. Obviously, there is a development risk. This is a cons, a development risk, 
and the potential miss opportunity if your project failed because you will not get an upfront. Okay. Uh, coming back on, on this one, again, it takes two to tango. I already mentioned that, you know, maybe you will have limited options. You may struggle to find a partner and some of our clients, we are struggling to find them a partner. So this is not easy. So you need to be pretty flexible in, 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 your, in, in your strategy and be ready to redirect your strategy depending on, on the opportunity and the, the option of partnering. Okay, uh, I'm in the options where you decide to have an affiliate in Japan. So it's possible to have a low cost legal entity in Japan. You know, there is a mindset that Japan is a very expensive country. Obviously, if you, if you send a thousand, not a thousand, a dozen of expat, you know, it will cost uh, a lot. Uh, but you can set up a minimal but fully operational organization. At the beginning, it could be seven to eight people. And maybe you do not need expat if you find the right people. You start with the three uh, mandatory officers, general manager, QA, and pharmacovigilant. Very rapidly, you need to get on board your medical officer and, and, and you who is also at the beginning, the head of, of clinical operation, you need to have rapidly a regulatory expert. In order to, to build a low cost legal entity in Japan, you need to outsource everything or everything that can be outsourced as you are doing in the US, in Europe. And you can use the same CRO, for example, you know, uh, and it will, not, it will cost a little bit more per patient in Japan. Uh, but, you know, this is feasible. But more than that, you can outsource your incorporation, your tax, your payroll, your health and life insurance, your pharmacovigilance and clinical operation. You can almost outsource everything, you know. You need to, but you need to build your core expertise because you will be able to outsource if you have core expertise. You can use interim management sourcing. You know, and we are doing, doing that for some of our clients being part-time, you know, general manager or part-time of, of head of development in order to close the bridge. Uh, what I would like to, to mention is you, you need to pay special attention to the hiring of the right people. And I will come back on that later. And you need to rent a small but modern and attractive office space in a convenient area for commuter. You do not need 1,000 meters square in, uh, in Akasaka, you know, or close to the Tokyo Champs-Élysées, you know, uh, like one biotech uh, asks us, you know, you don't need that, you know, but you need a cozy office where people can meet and this is very important for Japanese, you know, to meet, you know, have in mind that Japanese are very small house. So they want to get out of their house, at least after COVID. On the right, I uh, listed what should be your objective, you know, to achieve these uh, low cost legal entities in Japan. You need to minimize the fixed cost. You need to put together the necessary core expertise you need to attract the right expertise and management skill. You need to build your core team. Very important, you need to get Japan into the global map. You will see very rapidly that your headquarters are very much European and US focus. You know, you need to bring them to Japan. You need to bring Japan to the global map. And you need to prepare for a forthcoming buildup. In this slide, I would like to 
tell you a little bit how we develop drug in Japan, and there are roughly three strategies. And there are plenty of in between, but I have simplified that. There are three ways to develop a new drug in Japan. You can perform a domestic program. So phase one, phase two, A, phase two B, phase three, long-term study in Japanese. You can perform a bridging program with phase one in Japanese and a phase two, three bridging study in Japanese. This study will bridge with one of the pivotal study done in Caucasian. Or, and this is a big trend, you perform a global program, including Japan. The only pure Japanese study that you are going to do is a phase one single dose repeated dose in Japanese, because PNDA most of the time ask for data, safety and pharmacokinetic data in Japanese before, before moving in global phase two or three. Come back on the bridging program. In the bridging program, you need to demonstrate the similarity of efficacy and safety between Japanese and Caucasian most of the time. And this is tricky and this is risky. So, you know, we don't like that and PNDA don't like that, but sometimes this is our only option. So the takeaway of that is a global program including Japanese center and patient from phase two is the smartest, fastest, safest, and cheapest way to reach the market. Smartest, fastest, and cheapest, you can understand that. Safest is safest in terms of regulatory approval. You don't want to enter never ending discussion with the agency, question after question, providing data, which generate new questions and so on. So, so this strategy is the safest, you know, in terms of approval. Okay. So where well, I'm in time. Okay. I have still ten minutes. Shorten the time to market. There are ways to shorten the time to market, and the how you do that first. You plan early. Secondly, you integrate Japan into the global development plan from early stage. Thirdly, you get advice and support. Fourthly, you threaten your project management and work on your critical path and subcritical path because the subcritical path will become critical when you shorten your critical your primary critical pass. Fifth, you need to be ambitious, but realistic and smart. Ambitious, what, 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 what do, do I mean by ambition? You can file at the same time in the US, in Europe and in Japan. You know, the good company, the best interest company are doing that, you know. Um, realistic, Be realistic, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because we, so many of our clients are dreaming, you know, they come to us and say, oh, FDA accept that, PND should accept. It doesn't, it doesn't play like that, you know, this is not because the FDA has accepted your program that FDA, that PND will accept. You need to go to PND, you need to negotiate, you need to support your plan and PNDA will maybe will have specific requests and most of the time very reasonable requests, you know? uh, but you need to go and listen. You need to be smart, listen the agency, you know, don't be arrogant. If you are smart, they will help you, you know, they will make your life easy. So this is for shortening time to market for normal program. There is a, an ultra short way to the market. We call that in Japanese sakigake. Uh, this is this is really ultra short, but this is very challenging to get a designation, and this is binding. So, what 
What do you need for sakigake? Sakigake drug are the drug where the dossier is filed first in Japan. So you, if you achieve a first uh, simul simultaneous approval in the US and in Europe and, and Japan, you can file a couple of weeks before in Japan. So, so you are in this shakigaki. There are also other, obviously, uh, um, requests. You know, it should be a disease, a lethal disease. It's, they, they, there is uh, no standard of care, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, what is the takeaway of that? It's feasible to shorten the time to market, and it's feasible to file at the same time the NDA in US, in Europe, and in Japan. The pricing system in Japan now, very rapidly, price in Japan are predictable and fair. Uh, they are, I'm going to go rapidly. There is two main methods, the cost method and the comparator methods. The comparator method is the most used. Um, uh, this, is, this method is used by the pricing bureau when there are already product approved in the indication or treatment line, when you use a comparator in the clinical trial, uh, but you, you know, and uh, you need to demonstrate obviously the value of your product in, in a comparative trial. Um, a premium is possible if your new product bring a clear, evidence supported and I highlight that 10 times evidence supported additional clinical benefit to Japanese patient and or healthcare system in Japan. Clear evidence supported is mandatory to get a premium. You get the price three months after approval if your company accepts the proposed price, the proposed price. If not, there will be an additional three months cycle, but with no guarantee of a better price. And don't play price game in Japan because the MSW don't like that. And if they don't like you, then you will face problems. The market access, I already mentioned some parts. Uh, there is an universal health insurance coverage with limited co-payment. So over 75 years old patient pay 10% and below 30%. You have access to any hospital, any KOL, any doctor where you want, you know, um, as a patient. Uh, if you, if you launch a product uh, in Japan, you need to list your product in hospital or hospital network pharmacies. Uh, and, and that will be easier if uh, your product is already in the guideline and supported by KOL. <coughs> Sorry, so KOL engage, engagement is important. Post-approval, uh, data generation, I'm going to be short. Uh, there are two types of post-approval data generation within the approved indication and for new indication, life cycle management. Uh, within the approved indication, <coughs> sorry, this is a PMS, <coughs> drug use investigation, special drug investigation, but also company phase four, and there are plenty of different possible studies. And this is also investigator-led study. Be super careful with compliance because we have seen some major compliance issue in the recent year. Company sponsor study is pretty simple, follow GCP. Investigator-led study, they have to be managed completely by the investigator. You are not authorized to put your hands on there. For life cycle management, additional indication, new formulation, fix those combination, labeling change, there are plenty of, uh, of uh, options there to expand uh, 
uh, your life, uh, the life of your uh, of your product. Ah, yeah, getting the right people on board. We can spend an half day on that. Uh, this is where the real challenge starts, but this is absolutely critical. Um, let's start with the issues. First, the big cultural talents are rare. Secondly, there is a limited diversity in terms of thinking in Japan, and this is linked to the Japanese education. You know, in, in Japanese school, in Japanese university, they favor first, everybody is the same. Everybody belongs to the, to the community. So uh, they, they do not encourage people to speak up. And this is true, you know, if, among salaryman uh, and so on, you know. Speaking up is not culturally valued in Japan, but you need people speaking up. You know, you don't want to have only a yes man in your team. So this is important. And don't forget also the importance of seniority in Japan. This is maybe less true in small organization or in biotech or in startup, but it's still true when, when, when you receive a curriculum. So let's go back on, on, the right, on the left part. The top talent are rare and do not look for a new job. You know, the top talent are very well treated most of, most of the time. You know, they grow in their organization. Most of the time they are, they, they, they are provided plenty of trainings. They are pretty well paid, you know. Uh, so they don't look for a new job most of the time. So how to attract them? So maybe you can talk later on about that. Do not trust headhunter who act as a recycler. Identify the conflict of interest in the headhunters. Do not trust job hoppers. You know, there are some people changing job every 18 months because this is the best way to get a salary increase. 10%, 15%, 25%. You know? So there, there is a temptation to change job, you know, pretty often. If, if, if they are driven by, 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 uh, by the package. But some people are changing, you know, when you look at CV, you know, some people have been in five or six companies in less than 10 years, but they never achieved anything and they, ne they never grew wi within their company. So you should ask why. Ask for an independent competency assessment in a big cultural setting. This is important. You know, you are going to interview someone. Yeah, I take, uh, yeah, I take uh, three minutes more. Um, ask for an independent competency assessment in a big cultural setting. This is important and, and we can talk about that later on. Fluent in English, and this is what we call the English teacher syndrome, you know, uh, and, and this is a major mistake by global company. They hire people who speak well English, but it would be best, better that they look at, you know, leadership competency. And, and I've seen so many mistakes, you know, in terms of hiring managers, because people are driven, yeah, he speaks so well English. Uh, you know, be careful about the pseudo referees. Don't trust the referees that headhunters are providing. Ask for independent ref referees, you know, and we can provide you some referees if you want. You know. Expatriate, maybe, yeah, but it could cost a hell. Interim management sourcing is an option when you need to bridge. And leverage your network, you know, we can help you there. My conclusion is, and I'm going to read it. So Japan is an attractive and forcible market for, for European and US biotech and medtech. Not being in Japan or moving too late to Japan 
is a loss of, of business, business opportunity and prevent Japanese patients from access to promising drug and device. Plan to move to Japan early with a robust, data-driven, realistic global product development plan. Meet the pharmaceutical and medical device agency. Build trust. Listen, listen, and listen. A global development program, including Japanese Center on Patient from Phase 2, is the smartest, fastest, safe, safest, and cheapest way to reach and capture the Japanese market. Do not fear to be lost in translation. You will get, you will get help. Japan is a very fun country to be in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eric, for this very uh, insightful presentation. So I think it's time for the Q&A session. Um, there's a first question. Can you hear me, Eric? Yeah. Yeah, okay. There's a first question. This is, how long does it take to get a molecule approved uh, by the PMDA? I mean, roughly. The average uh, PMDA is shorter than Europe. Uh, the average is one year. For, um, for Sakigake, it could be three to six months. Uh, for uh, orphan drug uh, with a good file, it could be six to nine months. Average, uh, 12 months. For the good company, okay. if, you know, it is always the same game, you know. You, you need to have a good file. Huh? You know, if you have a good file, the, the agency moves very rapidly. Okay. Another question is, and, 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 and could you tell us more about uh, the, the, the same thing, but for medical devices? Yeah, so medical device, there are different types of medical device. You know, I'm, I'm talking uh, about um, what we call today therapeutics apps. So, so apps who are going either to compete with drug or to be complementary to drugs. And for these, for these device, you need to validate your digital endpoint or your digital biomarker, or, you know, whatever you call it. And then you need to perform a pivotal study. You can do it in Japan, but it's more expensive because you will have to get the power into your study. Or, or you can do a global study, including, including Japanese patients. OK. And, and there's another question, Eric, is uh, regarding what is the equivalent of C mark of 510K in Japan for IVD product? Maybe, maybe uh, from, a, I, I, from I a global guess, point of view, from a global point of view, maybe first. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. This is about the quality of the product, isn't it? This is uh, the C mark. The, the C mark is when you register a product in, in Europe, you know, you get a C mark. Otherwise, the product cannot be on the market. You mean the trademark? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's the, the, uh, the approval for a device to be... Uh, to be ah, okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are talking about device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so there, you know, the device are divided in, as far as I remember, four categories. There are, as far as I remember, two or three categories for which the C marks can be outsourced to a quality insurance uh, company. And for, for the, the device who are tricky to handle or who are with some risk and so on, PMD handle them directly. So the certification in in, in three out of four category come from an out, an, uh, outside quality or certification company. And for some device, the certification is done directly by, uh, by PNDA or by the MLW, PNDA, I guess. Okay. Okay. Okay, another question. You know, uh, talking about device, 
you, you need to be aware that the, uh, the radio emissions standards, uh, certification are different. So it has to be handled pretty early. And, and I face that when we are developing a, a monitoring patch and, uh, you know, and, 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 and we, we, we need to have a Japanese certification for that. Uh, and at that time, I was discovering that so we were pretty late doing that. So, so my recommendation is to to ask early in the development, as soon as that your your device is pre-final. You know? okay. okay. So do not hesitate to uh, to ask questions. Um, I I will have a, a, a question is. Uh, in, in which way uh, the relationship with the uh, PMDA is different from the relationship with FDA or uh, EMEA? Um, if you would have asked this question 20, time, 20 years ago, I would have told you PMDA was not really scientific, science driven. You know, they were extremely bureaucratic and, and they were not talking about science, they were talking about checklist, about uh, guide, you know, guideline and, and so on. Now, there are very, very limited differences. You know, uh, uh, they are talking about science, they are talking about patient, they are talking about medical needs, they are talking about product profile, they are talking about efficacy, safety and so on. You know, what, what is different is, um, how you talk with them, you know, and uh, um, and I knew in Japan, um, you know, first trust is important. This is why I mentioned trust several times, but also politeness, you know, also um, you know respect, also um, uh, what else, um, you know, the how you talk to them. You know, and um, you know, you you need to send to PMDA people who speak well Japanese. You know, when when you speak Japanese, there are different level of politeness. You know, so you 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 don't talk to PMDA like you talk in the street. You know, and 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 maybe you are less direct. You know, with PMDA, I can I can tell you my my experience. You know, I. I went so many times with, with, uh, to, to the PNDA and in fact, uh, my team was asking me to tell PNDA what they cannot tell in Japanese because this is considered as impolite. So I was the foreigner, we were asking impolite questions and, and, uh, and I can do that because I am a foreigner, you know, you know, with, after different meeting, we, we started to build a trust with PMDA and we can ask very direct questions. We can even challenge them and say, no, we should not do that. You know, what, what, what you are recommending us doesn't, doesn't make sense, you know, because of that, that, that. So we had very direct discussion and they, they appreciate these, uh, the, the honesty, the integrity, uh, and one thing, Never cheat them. Never cheat the PMDA. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it, it the next question coming is uh, I am I am um, uh, I am a CEO of a, of a biotech of medtech in Japan in 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 Europe or in France. I can have direct access with the PMDA if needed, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but they need to talk with us first. And mm -hmm. I have an exa I have an example recently. You know, a company, a European company, they started to to talk directly to PND, sending email. Uh, you know, and, the, and you know, and PND, they are very polite. They answer, you know, but they get stuck. <laughs> they get stuck, you know. So because they don't, they don't exactly know how to deal with PMDA. You, when you go to PMDA, you have two types of meeting, informal and formal. Uh, you know, if you want to have informal meeting, you, ne you need to fill a form and, and, and tell 
why you need this, why you need this meeting and so on. And you need to know what do you expect from an informal meeting against a formal meeting. Formal meetings are, are binding for PNDA. So their recommendation bind, bound them you know, and, and the company, obviously. So, so there are different types of meetings. So I don't recommend, you know, your uh, biotech CEO to go, you know, they need to call to someone who, who knows how to do it. But, but the, the next thing is that if uh, they are uh, actually advised and if uh, they do things uh, that should be done, then they can participate in a meeting with the PMDA for, with a translator, for example. No, but, you know, it's better to start on the, on the right ground. You know, you don't go to PMDA like that, knock, knock, knock. And, and uh, you can always send an email, you know, sometimes you can get an email from an officer and so on. But, but this is, you know, this is not the right way to have, to have an exchange with PMD. There is, you know, Japan is a country of system and process. And this is how it works so well. You know, when you follow the system, when you follow the process, it works perfectly well. By the way, I learned the lesson when I arrived in Japan. You know, I was, I was pissing, you know, and say, why, why that, why that, you know? And when I, when I, I realized that when you follow the process, it works so well because everything is well organized. So you need to understand the process and you enter the process and you get your answer. So don't go like that. Don't send an email. Don't work like that. Okay. The, the, <clears throat> the next question is, um, do, do, uh, is there some local CROs that are competitive compared to the global CROs in Japan? Yeah, there, there, there are local CROs, yeah, and I know, we know some of them, I work with some of them. Um, they are, they could be good. They could be less expensive, but a little bit more difficult to manage. Uh, you know, I have a couple of examples about that. So, um, uh, you know, you will select your CRO based upon their network of KOL, the therapeutic field they have been involved before and so on. So you, you need to start to exchange with CROs, uh, understand where they are good. You know? uh, but there are local CRO, yeah. Uh, not all are working very well with foreign company. You know, uh, it depends, it depends. No? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how is perceived the quality of the product in Japan compared yeah. to the US and, and, and Europe? Yeah, we can talk uh, one day about that. Um, the quality of the product is of critical importance in Japan. You know, I can tell you one day we received product. I'm not talking in which company I was at that time. We received product with some black spot on the white tablet, and which was perfectly fine for Europe. In Japan, it led to the withdrawal of the batches. So any quality issue in Japan of the primary product of the, of the tablet or of the whatever, the, uh, the capsules or inclusions or precipitation in the ampoules or whatever lead to the withdrawal of all the batch, uh, which is not always the case in, in Europe. So, uh, and this is why most of the company have, uh, I'm talking about good company, have sophisticated, um, sometimes AI driven uh, quality uh, check system, you know, uh, uh, automatic check system, or even um, staff. Uh, uh, checking the quality of the product. Uh, quality is absolutely critical. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I remember from my experience in, in Japan that uh, uh, visual inspection, I mean, the eyes, of the, the eyes of the uh, 
uh, of the French uh, were not uh, trained as the eyes of the Japanese, and you we have like to a, review the, the the visual inspection in Japan. Yeah. You know, I can tell you, Pierre, we sent our Japanese checker to to our German manufacturing site, and they train the German checker. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, and. Uh, and that was the, the, the only way to get uh, uh, a product which fit the quality of the country. Thank you, Eric. If you have a, a last, I uh, would say, advice uh, to, uh, to, uh, to give to, uh, to the audience. No, I can only uh, tell to the audience that if, if they have any question, they can, they can mail me. Uh, I will not answer immediately, but I will answer. <laughs> Uh, they can also uh, ask me questions through my LinkedIn, uh, and time to time I'm publishing paper there, so they can read it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Eric. So uh, I think Thank it you. was a, a very good webinar, and um, um, this webinar was also for me uh, a way to um, to put Japan at the right level. Uh, because you know I've worked 13 years there, and uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, we are talking a lot about China, but we are forgetting Japan. Yeah. And uh, Japan is uh, from, uh, I would say, uh, for biotech and medtech and pharma company, uh, remains the third market in the world. Uh, this is, uh, as you say, uh, if you follow the rules, then you will get your product on the market on time yeah. with a good price. Absolutely. So uh, it, it's, it's worth looking at this market. And uh, thank you, Eric, for, for, uh, for your presentation. And uh, do not hesitate uh, to, to send questions to Eric as he, as he proposed. And uh, thank you very much for uh, having uh, followed this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Bye-bye.